All right, welcome. We're going to be uh, talking about how to find the uh, derivative of an integral. All right, this is known as the fundamental theorem of calculus. We'll call it fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, usually it's called part one or part two, but we're going to be finding the derivative of different functions where the functions equal the integral, which means they equal the antiderivative. All right, so for this first one, we're going to find out what is the derivative of h prime of x. Now, to figure this out, what we're going to do is we're going to realize that we have a function which we're integrating. And h of x equals the integral of this function. So to find h prime, what I want to think about first is what does h prime equal? Well, as we write this out, we know that when we find the antiderivative, right, and that's what we're trying to do when we take the integral of a function, we're going to find the antiderivative of this function right here that I'm underlining. Um, when we find this antiderivative, this antiderivative equals h of x. Okay, because that's what equals the integral. So we're going to have h all right, of um, the upper limit. So in this case, we're going to have 3x squared minus 1 minus h of 0. Okay, so now when we write that out, I think it's important because now we're going to try to figure out what is the derivative of h of x. So we're actually going to figure out what is the derivative of this function itself. So we're going to take the derivative of this, all right, and that's going to equal h prime of x. All right, so when we do that, we're going to take the derivative of this right here, Okay, so the derivative of h composed of 3x squared minus 1. Well, if you take the derivative of this, this is a composite function, so what we have to use is a chain rule. So we're going to have h prime of 3x squared minus 1, all right, times the derivative of the inside, and that's going to give us 6x. We're then going to take the derivative of negative h of 0. Well, h of 0 is going to be 0, because we're integrating from 0 to 0, all right, uh, or it's going to be a constant, sorry, it's going to be a constant, so... Um, because you take the derivative of a constant, that equals 0, so we're minus 0. Now, when we have this, um, we can see that we have 6x times h prime. Well, h prime, we know, is equal to the value of the function inside. So it's this right here, all right? Because the derivative of any antiderivative equals the function you just integrated. So here we have, all right, um, the square root of tq minus 4t. Well, we're actually substituting in 3x squared minus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 3x squared minus 1, and we're going to cube that, minus 4 times 3x squared minus 1. All right, and that is what we have when we find out h prime of 3x squared minus 1. Then don't forget to multiply by 6x, and that, my friends, is, what is, is going to be the derivative of h prime of x. Get box it in. And that's how we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus. All right. Well, let's try another one. <clears throat> to do this, we're going to figure out the same thing. Find m of x. Well, m of x, once again, we're going to have, um, take this derivative. Well, let's first think about what happens when we actually find the antiderivative and plug it in. So we have m of 2x minus m of x. Um, what we get then when we take the derivative is we have the derivative of m composed of 2x times the derivative of the inside, because we have to do the chain rule again, times 2, minus the derivative of m of x. Oops, there you go. So derivative of m of x is m of x. So what do we know? Well, from here, we're going to figure out what is m prime of x. That's going to equal, <coughs> we know that's going to equal this, um, 2 times the derivative of m, which is going to equal the value inside, composed of 2x. So we're going to have 1 over 2x, the quantity squared, plus 1. And now minus m prime of x, which is going to equal, once again, the function we just took the antiderivative of, which is going to be 1 over x squared plus 1, because we're substituting m for all the placeholders or variables inside that value. And there is our derivative. Cool. All right, let's try one more. All right, one more. And what we have here is we have t of x. So we're going to take the derivative of this. So we're going to find t prime. So to find t prime, I'm going to first find what, that, what happens when we take the antiderivative. Well, we'll have t composed of cosine of 3x minus t of 3. We'll take the derivative of this. When we have that, we take the derivative of, well, we have t prime. Composed of cosine of 3x still. And now we have to finish the chain rule by taking the derivative of the inside. 
which would give us need a little bit more room. All right, negative 3 sine of 3x. We are going to subtract that to the derivative of t of 3. Well, t of 3 is a value, is a number, all right? That's going to be some sort of value. The derivative of any constant or value is going to be 0. So we have 0 right there. So now we can finish this up by finding, okay, what is t prime of x? Well, we can see it's going to be negative 3 sine of 3x times t prime composed of 3 uh, cosine of 3x. So here is what we know is going to be um, t prime. So we're going to substitute that in for all the t values. So we have cosine of 3x times the square root of 4 minus cosine of 3x minus 0. And then bada bing, bada boom. And there is our answer. Okay. Well, we went through three different problems using the fundamental theorem of calculus where we're going to take the derivative of an integral um, and solving this where we don't have a simple value of x, all right, in the upper limit, but instead we have values that are other than x. So with that, remember to use your chain rule, all right, make, make sure you take the derivative thoroughly, but if you think about, all right, what we get when we take the derivative or find the antiderivative of upper limit minus lower limit and take the derivative of that, um, that can help us determine, all right, our final answers in each one of the cases. All right. Well, good luck and God bless and the rest of your problems.